this is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by. If you're new to my channel, welcome. And please make sure that you hit that subscribe button and then the notification bell so you get notified whenever I post something new. Today I'm going to finish up my series of birch tree painting. I am going to start next with my what I would have as my spring version. Now this is more of an abstract type of, of painting that I'm doing, not realistic by any means. I am going to be starting with a number three glass brush and this is the glass art by Dynasty number 72. It's a number three brush. I'm going to be using a whole mixture on my spring one. I'm going to be using wicker white to multi-surface paint. I am going to be using Butler Magenta, which is a folk art enamel. All these are folk art paints. Then I'm going to be using Magenta, which is multi-surface. And then I'm going to throw in some citrus green to represent leaves. Uh, this is my spring version of my glass. The fall one is going to be created with Moon Yellow multi-surface paint, pure orange multi-surface paint, vivid orange also multi-surface and then I'm going to throw in some of the th thicket for my leaves because of it being the tree will have fully bloomed into green leaves, the darker version and not the lighter version so that's why I'm throwing in the dark for my winter one, I'm going to be using the wicker white and throwing in some warm white just to kind of indicate the, the feeling of snow and then just so that there's some color and some contrast, that's why I'm using the white and the warm white. Then I'm going to throw in some metallic gold, also folk art enamel. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. I already started doing the little white leaves. Now, I'm just tapping in, like I said, in just random order, random sizes, the leaves. There's just no uh, specific amount. Alright, so continuing on here, sorry about that, I that interruption. I am going to keep painting here and just going around typically towards the top of the branches that I've painted and tapping in my white. If you viewed my other video of putting leaves, the green leaves, which would be more of the summer, um, you'll kind of understand where I'm going with this. So if you haven't viewed it, you might want to make some time to do that. So even if it's hanging down, I'm still going to tap some leaves and I'm just just for the purpose of painting the glass I'm doing it as though we have blossoms you know how you would with spring and then having some leaves come out just to give it some color and make it fun that's what doing this glass painting is all about as far as I'm concerned is having fun and having something funny or not funny but something fun to drink drink your favorite beer from or wine or whatever type of glass you choose to paint. There's so many different types you aren't limited by any means when you're painting the glass where you just need to make sure you buy what you like and if you're doing these for gifts and if you have any idea what somebody's favorite drink is then you know buy accordingly. They really do make awesome gifts. I mean, I think it's special to be able to pull out some great glassware to serve your guests in. Or special occasions, if you're involved in any kind of special clubs or whatnot, you know, why not add that? Maybe this is a, an event that you can hold for people in your group to participate in. And again now I'm doing the, the magenta and just tapping it in. Now if I go over any of the white, oh, obviously that's going to change the color a little bit. 
and I'm not just, you know, I'm just kind of tapping, not really trying to be specific as far as the shape of the blossoms. That is really not a concern when I'm painting these. It's just more or less to give it some interest and color. So I'm going to try to wrap these up for you so that the series is actually done. I don't want to drag it out too long. But I do have four more that I'm going to show you. I was going to do eight like this and I decided instead of doing that I would do eight but I would do four with this type of design. They're still all tree related which is good. But the other one will be be a little bit different. So you'll have to stay tuned for that to post. And again this will be my, I believe it's third in the three-part series for my painted glass for the birch tree. And it's okay. You know, when you're painting or trying to come up with ideas it's okay to add your own little flair. You know, so this is more of an abstract version. You know, it's not meant to be literal by any means. Realistic. It's my toss on it. And so it may not be 100% accurate as far as exactly what happens with a birch tree. But that's okay. It's a fun glass to serve your friends, family. Also helps distinguish whose glass is whose because you won't need to have a charm when your glasses are different, right? Different colors, different designs. Like I said, just tap, tap, tapping in here. No certain de designer shape. And I'm not even cleaning my glass, or my glass, my brush in between. Now this is the Butler Magenta. And so it's a little bit more of a purplish pink. But as you can see, it just kind of mixes in there and gives it a little bit of a different different twist. Whoops, I'm going back into the magenta. Definitely an awesome color. All right. So, hopefully I'm staying on camera here. Just tap, tap, tap it in here. And then the final one that I will add is the green to be sporting like as if, you know, it's just starting to, to come out with leaves. Just beginning. And if you have any other variations that you've tried, I would love to hear from you what those might be. Feel free to make comments down below and let me know what you've tried as far as your designs go, you know, with this type of, uh, you know, tree painting. All right, and here comes the citrus green, which is going to add some brightness to this. I'm not going to put a lot of this in here because I'm more concentrated on the blooms. But they'll be in there. I mean, definitely be noticeable. I'm trying to wipe off my brush a little bit more. Just kind of more of a sporadic little touch. 
not as defined or frequent as the pinks and the white. If you feel like you've gotten too much of one color, then you know, add more. You know, go back and add more of what you think is lacking. And you can always go over it. Always go back and add to it. Again, just a fun and festive glass. And I want to make sure, just to reiterate, I like to try to remember to say this with my videos, so sorry if it's if it gets old. But make sure before you start painting on your glass that you do clean it. Wash it with soap and water, or at least do the cleaning of it with the rubbing alcohol. And make sure that it's clean before you start painting on it. That just benefits you because it'll enable the glass paint to adhere to the, the glass better. That's the benefit. So what do you think so far? Do you like this, this series? You know, what would you like to see me do? I would love to hear from you. Get your suggestions, things you would like to see here on YouTube. And I really like doing the painted glass. But sometimes it's kind of hard to think of things that people would be interested in seeing. Alright, I think I'm going to stop for on this one right here. And just want to show you just real quickly what it looks like. And like I said, I think it's fun and festive. I really do like it. Hope you do too. The next one I'm going to be doing is more of in my orange series. So I am going to be just going around doing the same thing. Just tap, 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 tap all over. Starting with my moon yellow. And this will be my rendition of fall. Very fun. <clears throat> Excuse me. And just make sure that you watch the entire series because I do start from the beginning of adding the gold background. If you are new to my channel, one of the reasons I like to add backgrounds a lot is that it gives the actual piece more durability because there's a thicker amount of paint on it. The thicker your paint is, the more durable it will be. The only thing I do need to caution you on is being careful. If you're going to bake this, don't put it on too thickly or it can bubble. And you really don't want a beautiful creation with a bunch of bubbles in it because they're really not pretty. I'm speaking from experience. One thing nice about this paint is that you don't have to bake it. My understanding is it's more durable if you bake it, but you do not have to bake it. You can allow it to air dry for 21 days to be fully cured. Now, with that being said, I always like to say that it's not that it's not dry to touch because it is a lot sooner than 21 days. You know, could you drink out of it? Absolutely. Just make sure that you're gentle with it. When cleaning it, do not put it in the dishwasher. Make sure that you've either baked it or you've allowed it to dry for that 21 days before you would put it in the dishwasher. Always, 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 always make sure you put it on the top rack of your dishwasher. If not, when you pull it out, you may be missing some paint. You might be missing all of your paint. Who knows? If you have a commercial grade dishwasher or you know that it's it heats up higher than most, don't put your glassware in there. If you want your glassware to be a long for the ride for a long time, I would highly recommend hand washing to preserve the de design. If you know anything about fine china, that's basically how you need to treat this is like fine china. And yes, it's hand painted glass. 
it's not printed on the gloss it's painted by hand so yes can it can it come off absolutely if you take care of it can you minimize that risk yes and if you paint it thicker then you can definitely you'll definitely find that it will be more durable I guess too it's just a matter of practice and that's one thing I recommend to people when they're getting into gloss painting try the different paints out depending on your type of painting style I can't tell you oh my gosh you're gonna absolutely love folk art enamels I don't know how what your painting style is it's worked wonders for the type of paint painting style I do for the most part I like a more opaque coverage so it's awesome for that but you know if you're somebody that likes more of a stained glass look is this the paint for you no it's really not I mean it's I would do more of a Peebo style paint if you were going to go that direction I mean that's just my advice to you however I tried a lot of different paints before I got comfortable with a paint and also would be willing to even use something even to this day different if I was doing some, a different type of painting. You know, you can be versatile in this part, you know, in this too. You don't have to do, everything doesn't have to be the same style. So you know, don't feel like you're stuck in that just because you decided there's a your favorite paint. You're, you're never stuck. You can keep trying. And they come out with different brands and I found out after doing one of my tutorials that a brand that I still had some of no longer being made, which is too bad. I'm, they must not have sold enough, I'm guessing, but I know a lot of artists that had used this brand so it kind of surprised me when I heard that I kept thinking you know they must have replaced it with something and I don't think they did I really don't I don't think they did and I know for a lot of people it was a great paint alright so we're going to go in with a brighter one I'm just going to be again hit or miss here you can hit on top if you want to do some drying of this in between colors, that's fine. I am not doing that. I'm just, I don't have any interest in doing that with this type of painting. But if you're someone that wants to make sure that your colors are not blending together, then by all means, you know, hit it with a hair dryer, hit it with a heat gun, hit it with some time, you know, let it dry. It's really whatever you have access to and what you're comfortable with. But I really think these are cute. Like I said, they're just meant to be fun glasses, nothing serious, easy for anybody to paint, and something that you're, you know, if you're selling these or if you're gifting these, something that people would like. And again, with this particular set, it's, they're all different. So makes it easy when somebody sits down their drink. Where's my drink at? Well, this is mine. You know, my color was this. What was your color? Oh, that's right. Mine was in the pinks. So I'm just saying it's just a nice, nice little variation. Yeah, you know, this type of uh, design is not a quick one to paint because of the different layers and such. Now, when you're done with your project, this is another thing I like to mention, and you're going to be baking it, you decide that's the route you're going, make sure that you always put gloss into a cold oven never have it heated up already allow your glassware to ch gradually change with the heat 
instead of it being an oh I'm sticking you in here now and I'm at the 350 degrees because guess what you're going to have a mess have you ever had something I did this one I think it was one holiday where I stuck I was going to drain some oil doing breakfast on Christmas morning and goofy me instead of putting it in metal I put it in a glass jar and it's hot now guess what kind of a mess I had going on when I got done a big fat mess and when you work hard on your glass where you're doing an artsy kind of thing do you want to really have it ruined by that? No, you don't. So just heed my warning. And then when it's finished, you just want to make sure that you pull it out after it's dried completely, or not dried, but after the, the temperature has gone down completely, had a chance to, you know, be dry. Because if not, it, you're risking cracking also. It's, it's the, the quick temperature change which causes it. It's not it's not what do you want to say? You know, it's just not the fact that you're painting a glass and what type of glass you're using has nothing to do with that really. It's the you know, the quick temperature change. Alright, so I'm just going to keep here now. Again, I'm doing the darker green on this part just for the mere fact that I'm acting as if these are older leaves and these would, you know, the tree would have plenty of them on there. They're just turning into these other colors as it gets further and further into fall. So this is my fall version. And I, you know, I think it's a fun glass. I hope you do too. You know, do you like the glass? Give me a big thumbs up at the end of the video if you do. I'd love to hear from you, your thoughts on this. You know, did you like the series like I asked earlier? You know, is there something else you'd like to see me paint? You know, my version of, I just kind of do like a variety, or just a variety. I don't really do a set style. But you can see it. I mean, it's definitely fall. You know, I could do, could have done it in little leaves. But I chose to do it in a more abstract manner. And that was intentional. It was not a mistake. I always feel like sometimes people will be, oh, why did she do that? Does she know how? To? Yeah, I know how to do other styles. But I wanted to do it this way. I chose to do it this way. I think it's fun. It's a fun style. Very pretty. You get the gist of it. Now, I'm not doing anything around the base of my glasses. On this one, I'm just leaving it the plain. You know, you could put leaves like they've fallen, especially for the fall one, not necessarily for all of them, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just leaving it like this. So here's this one. All right, I'm gonna kind of pull the paint off my brush. Now, this last one that I'm doing, this will be my winter one. I'm doing it again more of an abstract kind of thing where I'm going to be putting some white, the warm white, and make it more like it's winter. Okay? That's my intention. You know, I could have just left it plain because you know, a lot of times trees are really just plain without any leaves at all when fall hits. But I'm not doing that. I wanted it to have some interest and some color to it. Not a lot of color, but some. So that's what I'm doing. 
It may not be as thick as what you see on the other glasses, and it might by the time I get done with them, I'm not sure. It's one thing I like about this, you just kind of do it as you go and make that decision as you go. And there'll be some down in here because I have, have these little branches. And this is such an easy design. Such an easy design. Such a fun design. Very, even though it's kind of detailed as far as the different layers go, it's still just kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of um, meditative as far as, you know, it takes a little bit of time to do, which is good. You know, it's fine. But it's pretty. Not a lot of thinking has to go into it. I mean, really, when you're just tapping paint on, not much, not much thought process there. So that's nice. Gives you time to just kind of chill. You are painting, doing something you like. I mean, can you imagine just having some friends over to paint? I think it'd be fun. Yeah, I'm gonna stick my paint to the wrong thing here. All right, so I'm just kind of touching it and moving. All right. I want to go into my warm white, which again is just a slight difference. It's warm white. So, again, this is my more of an abstract kind of piece. So, I'm just putting it, it's happening. In. They're not really leaves, but I guess, you know, I'm making them the shape of leaves. It's okay. It's my rendition, right? I can make them however I want them. That's what being creative is all about, is how you see something, right? Alright, so I'm going to keep doing this. Tap tapping them in. on this and this one a little bit that's okay that's so pretty these make me happy and I think I mentioned this before but is there any color that ever affects you like makes you feel happy makes you feel nauseated anything like that. If you if you do or have ever experienced that, give me a comment down below what color it is and how you feel with it. You know, if it's a happy color for you, if it makes you sick to your stomach, if it makes you hungry, because I say like reds make you hungry. It's not a good color to have in your bedroom, although I have it in my bedroom. And I really don't wake up hungry, but I mean, I don't get up in the middle of the night to eat just because I have red red paint on my walls. But some people do, and they have recommended that for dining rooms. So I can see that. But I have a color that really does affect me. And that's yellow. At one point, at a house I lived in, I had painted the walls yellow, but I had an intention of doing more of a caramely color at the bottom of the walls and then doing a, because I like faux painting, doing a faux painting design over the top of this crazy white, or crazy yellow that I was paint, that I had painted. And our sofas that I bought, we were buying new sofas, they were yellow too. A lot of yellow going on. So I'll be honest with you, it made me sick to my stomach. I mean, there was, I had to do something with it, even if I had not planned on it already, and I couldn't wait to get something done with it because it literally made me sick to my stomach. And I thought, yeah, this is just weird. You know, just ridiculous that I have this, this color in here, and it's bright and happy, but it makes me sick to my stomach every time I walk into the room. 
and it's just that's just how it is now once I like I said once I got the technique on that I was doing it was awesome you know, it was fine definitely took that bright yellow and I don't know if you're familiar with McDonald's but that's what it reminded me as a McDonald color I don't normally react to McDonald's that way although I wish I would they are you know that doesn't bother me but this bothered me <laughs> this is so weird. weird but I know you know they say some colors are warm, some colors are cool, and different shades can be, so I'm sure, you know, they can make you feel a certain way. Of course, when I say that, a lot of times people look at me like I'm crazy, and that could be true too, but I don't know. So, like I guess that if you've ever had a similar experience, you know, let me know. I'd love to hear your stories. So this is my final color with this one, and I think it's pretty. You know, I think you can kind of get the gist that it's that it's for winter. Um, again, I'm just doing it like this to give it some some interest. Could have just left them plain without any leaves. That would have been fine, but I decided I wanted wanted them to have some something on them. All right, so we're coming to the end. So now these will probably dry for more than a day because I I'm not planning on baking them. Well, I will bake them sooner, I guess, because I'm actually gifting them. But I need to get the other the other set of four done first, and probably bake them all together. All right. I guess that these are not as full as the more colorful ones, but I still think they're pretty. I really like gold and white together. I could have done it with silver. Silver would probably be more, probably more of a color to indicate snow, but I don't know. I decided to do the gold instead. All right, so there we have it. So just to go over with you all the designs now, this would be the winter. This one is going to be my spring. And then I have my summer. Which is, which is the greens. And then I have my fall with the fall colors and a little touch of green. Alright, so there you have it. Four glasses in this series. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't done it already, make sure you do subscribe to my channel. Give me a big thumbs up if you like this video. Make a comment down below and let me know what your favorite thing was about this series. And make sure you hit that share button that you see below the video makes it very easy for you to share in your social networks with your family and friends. And until the next time, I will see you then. Have a good one.